Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Sport Show right here on Smash FM here on Lockdown Friday here in Melbourne. And of course, uh, let's uh, turn our attention to hockey now and of course speak to the Greensboro Hockey Club. Of course, uh, we've got uh, two very special guests on the show right now, of course, and that is Rob and Heath joining us right now. Thanks uh, both for joining us. Thanks for having us, mate. Thanks for having us. Uh, I guess I would love to be talking to both of you about the season uh, in 2020, but obviously that's, uh, I guess, done and dusted. Um, I guess for both of you as players and coaches, um, how bus train has this year been? It has been super frustrating. Um, obviously, uh, stopping and starting a little bit uh, before we got the, the bad news, um, which the season was fully cancelled. So, um, as players, obviously, um, you know, you get fired up, you do your pre-season, you generally start before Christmas, um, you do all the hard yards and we got so close to starting, um, that got taken away from us. Um, and then it was sort of that up and down and unknowing, um, when we are going to go ahead and if we were, and unfortunately we got the bad news when it all got cancelled and, um, yeah, now it's sort of laying low and hopefully the restrictions lift soon and, um, we'll go from there. Yeah, especially frustrating because we're just getting sinking our teeth into playing and coaching at the at the same time and sort of working working together with the with the team. So we're just sort of starting to make some ground and see some see some progress. It all got sort of put to a quite a quite a, um, abrupt halt, I guess. And then yeah, we've just sort of been yeah made it especially frustrating because we were seeing quite a bit of progress. I guess um, when I guess you had the chance of like training and bed out there on the field and um, there was like the start, stop, start um, in regards to training, were both of you optimistic that the season was going to go ahead as planned on the 25th of July? Yeah, there was a point where we were quite optimistic and it was, we thought it was a realistic chance. And then, um, as I said, it all came all came to a very quick and abrupt abrupt halt. So we all sort of had the mindset of, yep, it's gonna go it's gonna go ahead. Um, now tell us a bit about uh, the team that was meant to come out this year because, uh, obviously with the pandemic it hasn't happened. Tell us a couple of players in the team um, that uh, I guess you uh, were new to the team that was meant to play this year. Yeah, well well, first of all, it was, um, well, it was a little bit of a, a few changes early in the year with, um, you know, I guess, totally different leadership group. Um, and it was really exciting to see younger guys stepping up into those positions. Um, Geordie Rees and, um, and Billy um, and Ash, our goalkeeper, sort of taking that role and responsibility. So it was really exciting for those guys um, to find themselves in, um, in that leadership role. Um, uh, with some new guys, you know, we're sort of looking at, um, you know, younger guys stepping up into more important roles throughout the team. Um, so with, with some, some guys getting older or retiring over the last couple of years, it's, it's sort of really changed our mindset of, of blooding the youth of what we've, we've got all the younger guys over the last couple of years. And I think this year was really that year that we we're going to, we we're going to see that um, the progress and, um, you know, a, at least half a dozen to a dozen players really step up and, and shine and, and take that responsibility. So for me, that was, as an older player, um, that was most exciting for me leading into this season. Um, you know, and for like a, a 20 or a 21 year old or even an 18 year old for that to be taken away from you, I feel, you know, that, that's really disappointing for them because that's a step in their, in their progress of, of moving forward as, as people, hockey players, whatever it might be. So um, for me, that was the most disappointing thing um, with the whole COVID-19 stuff for a season to be taken away from, from the, such a young group um, that, as Rob said, that we're progressing really, really well. On the good side, I guess, uh, I, I know I've been to your venue in particular down at Plenty Park um, in past seasons uh, to watch hockey and you have a fantastic uh, hockey fields and obviously now you've got the upgrade, the club rooms, uh, which is currently... Uh, in the upgrading stage. Uh, how soon is that to, uh, you know, once we all get out of lockdown that, you know, you're walking into a brand new club rooms? 
yeah, if there's any um, silver lining with it all, it's given um, the club and the people working on the on the club rooms a bit of a free air and free space just to just to get it done. And it hasn't interrupted. There's been nothing to um, to interrupt. Um, so hopefully, when coming into next year, we'll have a, a brand new facility to uh, to showcase to um, to visiting teams. I think having a new facility will sort of um, freshen the place up a bit. And he said before, just within our team, a bit of a change of guard, if you if you like, and that'll be complemented with a new a new club room, and hopefully, you know, promote promote our sport and promote our hockey club within the within the local community and make uh, and make hockey. At Greensboro, uh, quite appealing for you know, someone who be thinking about maybe entering into a sport in for, in for, into next year after quite a bit of time to think about it. So yeah, it's quite exciting to have that new facility because it brings it will bring quite a lot to the club. I think so. The club's done really well and put a lot of people, some key people, have put quite a bit of work into uh, getting that up and running. So yeah, it's pretty exciting to see to hopefully have it done coming into the to next year. Yeah, just on that, I think it's due to be, I think it's scheduled, it's on schedule to be completed um, February next year. So it'll be perfect timing for us coming into the next season. Um, uh, yeah, we're really lucky. We've got two two grounds um, in great condition. So, yeah, we're going to have really nice facilities down there to, to um, you know, not only for the um, men and women seniors team, but also all our juniors that participate during the week. And, um, you know, we don't have to worry too much about, what teams are training when, because we can fit everyone in um, at good times. Um, and we're really lucky to have that, um, to go have that access. I know this is going to sound a silly question to ask, but uh, I guess, do you miss the old club rooms or are you uh, both of you relieved that uh, the new club rooms are going to arrive finally down there at Greensboro? And what does that mean to the club? Um, we've had some good memories in those club rooms. I guess we've been lucky enough to celebrate a number of wins and and premierships. But I think overall, it'll be, it'll be, as I said, it'll be exciting for the for the club to um to have a new, a brand new facility. Um, and hopefully, it's a great card for people to come, like the old the past players, to come down and check out and sort of re-engage with the with the club. I think that's going to be one of the the big pluses with that, just to get more people through the door and down at the. The ground, like yourself, will so hopefully it's a great excuse for you to get back down there and you. Um, you know be part of the the opening as well. So we hope to see you down there. Um, yeah, well, again, like a lot of people put a hard work into the initial club rooms. Um, yeah, lots of good memories in there. But hopefully, as we said, we've said again, just a part of a new chapter for the for the for our team and the, and the club as a whole. Uh, now. Of course, mentioned, uh, well, Heath might have mentioned this uh, in the uh, two questions ago about the juniors um, as well. Uh, and something I love about the Greensboro Hockey Club, and especially when I've been coming to the games, is that you uh, have a fantastic junior base uh, and you've bled a lot of juniors into the seniors team in the last couple of seasons. I guess, for both of you, how important is that and what does that mean? Yeah, oh mate, the 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 boys and girls that we have down at the club now, um, you know, like us, Rob and I both started down there. What in under Minkies, under sixes, you know, I started down there. Rob, his brother, my brother, our families were involved with the hockey club, and um, not only um, does it give you something to do and keep you fit, but you create lifelong friends. Um, you know, and that's something that, you, um, you know, we're so lucky to have been able to have done. Um, so for us, it's a massive, um, massive part of the club. We obviously want as many kids coming into hockey as possible. It's a great sport. Um, it's got that really community feel to it with the um, boys and girls, the juniors, the men and women, um, lots of families down there. Um, it's just a really nice place to be and grow up. Um, you learn a lot. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a healthy place to be a be a part of. Yeah, and there's, and there's a lot of people who worked hard for the um, NDHL, so the Northern District Hockey League. That's um, been a great initiative from out from the club. So we're hoping to um, make that as part of our, you know, the 2021 one season. And again, just to provide a base for young kids to uh, learn the basics, and then also a great environment, a great starting point for people any younger younger players who are looking for a, 
a new sport or a, you know a, a new venture. It's a great great entry point from for, for hockey. Now I know that uh, the men's and the women's Premier League teams are fantastic, and especially been so dominant the last couple of seasons, and uh, especially uh, the past decade or so. Uh, and I know I've covered a lot of grand finals uh, involving Greensboro, and especially winning those. Uh, premierships uh, consecutively bet- between either the men's or the women's. I guess, why do you think Greensboro is uh, so successful in the in the past decade? Oh, it's just I think just coming back to juniors and, and having good people around the club. Um, uh, like when we were juniors, we had great coaches and great teachers, um, like we still do today. Um, so I think success comes from that, and it's just a, a good club culture. So. Um, you know, you create friends and that's how you, you sort of great create that morale and, and wanting to play with each other and for each other. And um, if it's got that feeling and that um, down at the hockey club, then generally that drives success. Yeah, we had a really strong, I don't know, both teams, especially for the, for the men, there's a really strong training culture, like, and some strong continuity, like guys wouldn't, wouldn't miss, um, and there was a priority for the a lot of the for, for our squad, and I think that sort of lends itself to success, which we're you know which we we're fortunate enough to um to be part of. And I guess you know lots of people say that we were we we're lucky um to to have that success, but I think it did come from you know, quite a bit of hard work from a from a whole squad and a, a whole number of people starting from you know us as juniors and then all the way through to um all the influences we had as as, as senior players, but. Strong part of that was a lot of the stuff we did, you know, away from the away from the hockey field, lots of running and that during pre-season, that just and competitive training, and that just sort of flowed onto our performance um, on on the field, and then yeah, culminated in some um, some premierships. Obviously, both of you have been involved in those premierships. Which one is the most um, memorable one? I don't know. One that stand, I don't even know what year it was actually, but one that stands out was um, we played Campbell one year and I think we were a few goals down and we had a, a really nice 10 or 15 minutes after half time and I think we we uh, knocked in a four or five goals and it happened really quickly and um, yeah, that one stands out. I think, was that 2012? Well, I reckon it was six. I think it was 2-0 down and we ended up yeah. winning 6-4 six, I reckon. Um, yeah, the shootout. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, we had a probably a ten ten minute patch where we probably scored three or four, I think. Um, yeah, it was quite a quite a memorable one. Yeah, they're all exciting, I guess. Um, and I guess that's why we're still trying to. Yeah, we're we're still playing with it with a bit of hope. But yeah, it's ex- all, all all very exciting. I don't really remember the first couple. We we're quite young. I think Heath was about fifteen or sixteen. Um, yeah, no, they're all, all pretty good. Yeah, that, I, think, I think that 2012 one really, really stands out. Uh, now, of course, I have to um, I have to ask this question. Now, I know, uh, is there a particular rival um, that you play against that uh, that you'd love to beat? Oh, there's probably a few out there, to be honest. <laughs> but um, oh, Doncaster are our, our closest, uh, probably the closest club to us who have um, been in Premier League for the whole time that I've played. Um, and they've always, we've been, we're quite friendly with them, I guess, off the field. But on the field, it's always, it's always um, really, really competitive. And it's um, really sweet to beat them. Um, but then also, you know, Campbell, we've had a great rivalry, rivalry with um, playing so many um, grand finals against them. Um, and they're, they're a great club. Um, and, and same thing, you know, a lot of us are really are close and, and they're good people. But on the field, it's um, one of those nice ones that we always know it's such a tough game against them. Um, and if you come off, you know, you and you get a win, you know it's generally really well learnt. So those two clubs stick out for me. Yeah, I think early on, I don't know, when I first started playing, like we had a lot of close, like finals games against Hawthorne and Waverley, like as coming through as a, a younger, a younger player, it was always, a, I guess, a great challenge to play against them because they had a host of, you know, awesome, awesome players, I guess, and they just played to 
played pretty aggressively and pretty attackingly, which is the way we were taught to play. So, again, if you beat either of those teams, you knew you did, you, you did quite well. Um, but the teams that sort of that we enjoy playing against, I, I guess, and you know you've done well if you if you beat them, and the teams that have sort of played quite attacking and and had a crack, so so to speak. It always made yeah for exciting games to uh, to play. Now, uh, I guess what would be your advice to our listeners out there that should uh, get involved in hockey once we get our lockdown down there at Greensboro? I think um, from the just hockey in general, I know at Greensboro, just from a cultural sp- perspective, like being involved in a club where. Um, both men's and women's are held in the in the, in the same regard. Um, it lends itself for a really good um, culture on and off the field. Um, yeah, for, a, for for a whole host of reasons, but it's a really great environment. I think for a great entry point for someone to try a new sport. Um, yeah, such a welcoming, um, inclusive um, in, environment for yeah, just because yeah, the men and women are held in equal equal regard. Um, and yeah. It's a sport that welcomes um, anyone and everyone to come and come and have a go. Uh, now let's finish off with a couple of lighthearted questions uh, about your team in particular. Um, any embarrassing moments, either last year or I guess pre-season this year? Wouldn't say embarrassing. We've got a number of characters in the in the team that, um, yeah, like to um, yeah, I don't know, embarrassing. No, there's some good, there's some good young kids there. And there, Ryan Nangle keeps us very entertained. He, um, he gets on all the TikToks and and things like that. And they, you know, they do their, they're always on their on their phones sending videos to each other or whatnot. But there's a few characters. Ryan Nangle definitely sticks out. He's um, he, he could create a TV show. I reckon you just follow him around. He's um, he's he's a good, he's a good good young fella. But he's um keeps us all entertained. That's for sure. Um. Well, I've just answered my next question about comedians and best singers and dancers in TikTok. So I'll move on to the next one, uh, which is um, now, do either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? Um, I guess as we've gone for me, as I've got older, trying to be warmed up and, and get warmed up. Um, and something I've often copped a bit of a, a joke amongst the team, I guess. I try and get a walk in the morning, maybe a little bit of a jog as well to try and warm up the um the old body. I remember being a younger player and watching a number of players go for a run, maybe two hours out from the game, and I thought, what what's he what's he doing? But um, I've probably started to do that sort of thing just to make sure um, the older body is up and about when the when the game starts, I guess. Yeah, for me, I don't have too much. I usually go from season to season, to be honest. I, um, if I feel like I have a good game, I make sure I try and implement it the next week, whether it's um, you know, eating the same food or um, you know, travelling with the same people to the game or whatever it might be. But if I have a good game, I try and, I try and flow it through for the, until it works no longer and I try something else. The final one now, obviously, with both you um, playing and coaching, what have both you learnt from coaching that uh, you now use for for your playing? Good question. Uh, I guess just making sure what we do with trainings um, yeah, are going to be applicable to help us on the weekend. I guess. Um, yeah, I think we've had lots of discussion about yeah quality quality of training and making sure. You know what, what what we're doing is done with a bit of a bit of purpose, um, and yes, yeah, that's going to help us in the in the either on the weekend or in the or in the long run. Um, we've been really mindful of yeah what we what we're putting to the group. I mean, it's interesting to put yourself in the shoes of a player, and then you've got to put yourselves in the shoes of a coach. So it's been between quite a quite interesting. Yeah, for, for me, it's probably. Um... You know, when, when you coach, you have to sort of try and relate to everyone and, and realise what works for, for different people. Um, I was always pretty serious when it came to hockey, um, or whether it was at training or or, um, or game day. So for, for me, it's probably made me realise just to have a bit more of a smile on my face and, and enjoy it because, um, you know, it is, it's, such a, it's such a fun team to be a part of. Um, so 
So yeah, just to probably I've taken a, a taken note of a few other players and how they go about it, and I've sort of um, realised that that I could probably uh, could probably implement it into my game as well. Mm-hmm. Well, both of you, thank you so much for giving up your time to join us. Uh, obviously, we hopefully we can get back out there to uh, Plenty Park again to uh, watch the Mighty Go Burrows team in action, and uh, let's hope uh, and hopefully when the new club rooms are open up in early next year that. Uh, I'll definitely make sure I come out and uh, have a look at it and uh, enjoy the fantastic, fantastic atmosphere that I do always be uh, out there at Greensboro. Thanks, Phil. We'll put that again. No worries. And that's uh, Robert and Heath there from the uh, Greensboro Hockey Club. Make sure uh, in next year, in 2021, make sure you get down there to Plenty Park, of course, uh, and uh, support the mighty Greensboro Hockey Club uh, throughout the 2021 season. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away. Here on Lockdown Friday.